So this total length is 40. So this length is 20. So I can say this from here to here will be only 20. Yeah. So this is all about uh, slider crank mechanism. Next slide on double slider crank mechanism. Double slider crank mechanism. Or double slider crank chain. Double slider crank chain. Double slider crank chain. The slide down like this. If two turning pairs, if two turning pairs of a four bar chain, if two turning pairs of four bar chain are replaced by are replaced by two sliding pairs, if two turning pairs of a four bar chain are replaced by two sliding pairs, two sliding pairs such that such that pairs of similar kind are adjacent. Pairs of similar kind are adjacent. Pairs of similar kind are adjacent. Is known as pairs of similar kind are adjacent is known as a double slider crank chain. Double slider crank chain. Earlier we replaced one uh, turning pair of four bar chain with the sliding pair. That was a single slider crank chain, okay? Single slider crank chain. Now we will replace two turning pairs of a four bar chain with two sliding pairs. It is double slider crank chain, okay? Let's try to this. This is a four bar chain, you see. This is a four bar chain. This is a four bar chain. So we replaced one turning pair. So earlier we replaced this turning pair with a sliding pair. With a sliding pair. This is link number one. This is link number two. This is link number three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if two turning pairs of a four bar chain are replaced by two sliding pairs, so in such a way that pairs of similar kind are adjacent, okay? Pairs of similar kind are adjacent, then it's a double slider crank chain. Now see here in this mechanism, I cannot make this link one as slider. I cannot make link one as slider because link one is already supporting link number four. Link for link four, link number one is a guide, okay? I cannot make link one as a slider. And if you look at this link number two, so I can make link number two as a slider. Link number three again I cannot make it as a slider because it is a connecting link number four. So this I can make as a slider. So what I'm doing is I'm changing this link, shape of this link. So I'm making this link number two as slider. So link number two I made it as slider. So shape of link four is something like this. Link one. So link one will guide both the sliders. Link one will guide both the sliders. So, if you see 2 and 3 are connected by turning pair, 3 and 4 are connected by turning pair. So, 2 turning pairs are adjacent. So, 4 and 1, 1 and 2 are sliding pairs. 2 sliding pairs are adjacent. So, this is a mechanism. So, I am adding some flush to this uh, kinematic chain to make it useful. I'm changing the shape of this kinematic chain. So, basically, link 1 is guide for links 2 and 4, okay? For 2 and 4, link 1 is the guide. So, I am changing the shape of the guide. I am changing the shape of link number one. The sliders can be moved inside this guide, okay? The sliders can be moved inside this guide, so the sliders can take any position, okay? So I am calling this is link AB. This is link AB. So basically the guide is link number one, okay? Guide is link number one. The slider I am calling as link number two. This is 3 and this is link number 4. So two sliders, this is link number 2 is one slider, link number 4 is one slider, 2 is one slider, 4 is one slider, and 3 is the link which is connecting these two sliders, 3 is the link which is connecting both the sliders, and 1 is guide. So everything is kinematically same, so we just change the shape, okay? We just change the shape. So there are 4 links here, by fixing each link at a time, we will get different inversions. We call them as inversions of double crank chain, okay? Double slider crank chain. This slider like this. Inversions of double slider crank chain. 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 First inversion, right? So to get first inversion, I need to fix link number one. So I am fixing the guide, okay? So I am fixing the guide. 
So when you fix the guide, so these sliders are free to move. What you can do is you can move these sliders. So when I move this slider, so slider B will be moving accordingly, either up or down. Or when I move slider B, so slider A will be moving. And the points on this link will be moving in this plane, I can say. Now see here, so I'm just taking some point on this link number 3. I'm choosing this point P on link number 3. So the point P can lie anywhere on link number 3. I'm just extending this link number 3 and I'm choosing this point. So as you move the sliders, as you move the sliders, I can say point P will be moving in this plane. So for different angles of this slider, I can say point P will be having different coordinates. Or I can say when you move these sliders, the coordinates of point P will be continuously changing. So at this instant, at this instant, the coordinates of point P are like this. So if I can find this angle, theta, so the x coordinate of point P is this one. This is the x coordinate of point P. This distance, this is origin. This is the x coordinate of point P. This is the x coordinate of point P. And this is the y coordinate of point P at this instant, this distance. From here to here, this is y coordinate of point P. So I can say this is the y coordinate of point P. This is the x coordinate for point P and this is the y coordinate for, for point P. So I'm trying to find out this x and y coordinates in terms of theta. So if you look at this distance, if you look at this distance x, this is same as x. So if this is theta, it's theta with horizontal, this is theta. So this x I'm writing like this, x is pp cos theta x is bp cos theta. So if I project this length bp on this horizontal axis, I will get the x coordinate of point p. So if I project this point p on this vertical axis, I will get the coordinate of point, y coordinate of point p. So what's the y coordinate of point p? So y coordinate of point p is this distance, okay, from here to here, or I can say this distance. So from this triangle you can see, if I project this entire length on the vertical axis, I will get the y coordinate. So y coordinate is nothing but ap sin theta. So this distance is AP cos theta and this is AP sin theta. So AP sin theta is the y coordinate. So from this equation I am writing like this. So BP I am writing like that. Or I can say, so from this statement, cos theta I can write it as x by BP. And from this statement I am writing sin theta as y by AP. If I square and add these two statements, I will get this result x square by bp square plus y square by ab square. This is one. If you look at this, the locus of uh, point p is the locus of point p, okay? The locus of point p, you can see it is an ellipse, okay? You take any point on link number 3 and you try to find the locus of point p on link 3, point p will be always tracing ellipse, okay? Point P will be always stressing ellipse. So this device is called as elliptical triangle. Okay. It's called as elliptical triangle. So this device is used for generating ellipse. Okay. It's used for generating ellipse. So nothing is connected to motor, okay? So yeah, nothing. No link is connected to motor. So, so basically, this is used for drawing ellipse. You can move these sliders by using hand. Okay, just slide on like this. Locus of any point on link three. This is link three. You take any point on link three, it will trace an ellipse. Locus of any point on link three. Locus of any point on link 3 will trace an ellipse. Locus of any point on link 3 will trace an ellipse. Except, except midpoint of AB. Except midpoint of AB. Except midpoint of AB, you choose any point on this link, they will trace an ellipse. Locus of any point on link 3 will trace an ellipse, except midpoint of AB. If P is midpoint of AB, if P becomes midpoint of AB, so if P is midpoint, if P is midpoint of AB, 
So if P becomes midpoint of AB, I can say like this, AP will be same as BP. AP and BP, this lens will be same. If AP and BP, both the lens are same, my equation reduces like this. Except midpoint of AB. If P is midpoint of AB, if P is midpoint of AB, it will trace a circle. If P is midpoint of AB, it will trace a circle. If P is midpoint of AB, it will trace a circle. So except midpoint of link AB, all other points will trace ellipse, okay? So you don't think of these two points, okay? These two points are just moving inside the guide. These two points will always trace a straight line, okay? Except those two points, you think of any other point, they will trace an ellipse, okay? They will trace an ellipse. Pardon, elliptical ramel, it is used for generating ellipse. It is used for generating ellipse. Used for generating ellipse. Elliptical ramel. Used for generating ellipse. This is the first inversion, okay? The application of first inversion is elliptical ramel. Next time, second inversion. Second inversion. Second inversion. Second inversion. So this is link number one, so this is link number two, this is link number three, and this is link number four. So this is a slider crank chain, okay, double slider crank chain. This is double slider crank chain. Uh, Grashoff's law is only for four bar chains, okay. Grashoff's law is only for four bar chains. So we don't talk about Grashoff's law here in this. Uh, slider cranks okay so if your mechanism is having a slider there will be a crank all the, always if you are having a slider there will be a crank by default okay slider crank so uh, this is a double slider crank chain so i want to get the second inversion so for second inversion we need to fix link number two i fix link number two i fix link number two now see here, when you fix link number 2, when you fix link number 2, this hinge is fixed, okay? When you fix link number 2, this hinge is fixed. So since this hinge is fixed, you can rotate link number 3 about this hinge. You can rotate link number 3 about this hinge. When I rotate link number 3 about this hinge, you can imagine this point will be moving in a circular path. So when I rotate link number 3, this guide will be moving forward. As I rotate this, this guide will be moving back and forth, okay? This guide will be moving back and forth. And what is the support for this guide? The support for this guide is link number 2. This is fixed, okay? Since this is fixed, I can say that's guiding. It's not falling down because of link number 2. So I'm slightly changing the shapes, okay? I'm slightly changing the shape. I'm removing this. This is link number 1. This is link number 1. So link number 1 was supported by link number 2, okay? This fixed portion is link number 2, okay? This fixed portion is link number 2. You can imagine this as you rotate this. This link number one, this is link number one, okay, the guide, it will be reciprocating, okay. It will be reciprocating. So basically the mechanism looks like this. Mechanism is something like this. So when you rotate this link, this bar will be undergoing a turn motion. Okay. So basically this mechanism is used for converting a rotary motion into reciprocating motion or a reciprocating motion into rotary motion. It works exactly in a similar way as that of the first inversion of slider crank, okay? IC engine. So rotary motion is getting converted into reciprocating motion and vice versa, okay? The same thing happens here also. But we don't use this as IC engines, okay? If you want, you can use this also as, as an IC engine. So what you can do is, so this is link number 2, okay? 
Fixed link is link number two. This is link number one. This is link number three. This is link number four. So you can use this also IC in them. I can just make this as cylinder. If I make this as cylinder, I can make some combustion happen over here. When some combustion happens here, this will be reciprocating and this will be rotating. Rot rot this is exactly same as your IC in them. Okay. But we don't use this as IC in them. Uh, we use only single slider crank mechanism as IC in them. Because in a single slider crank mechanism, there is only one sliding pair. Okay. There is only one sliding pair. So only one reciprocating mass, so there is less wear and tear and less unbalanced forces. Here there are two reciprocating masses. So this is reciprocating as well as this is reciprocating. There will be unbalanced forces in this direction, there will be unbalanced forces in this direction. And at the same time, since these are two sliding pairs, more wear and tear. Okay? So there is only one sliding pair, so that is a better design than this. So we will be using that as IC here. We don't use this one. Let's use this is used as IC engine, but this can also be used as IC engine, but it's not recommended. This mechanism is called as squat shape mechanism. Squat shape mechanism. Squat shape mechanism. Squat shape mechanism. This mechanism is called as squat shape mechanism. The side on like this. Scotch up mechanism is used for scotch up mechanism is used for converting scotch up mechanism is used for converting rotary motion into reciprocating motion scotch up mechanism is used for converting rotary motion into reciprocating motion and vice versa rotary motion into reciprocating motion or reciprocating motion to rotary motion scotch up mechanism is used for converting a rotary motion into reciprocating motion or a reciprocating motion to rotary motion. Okay, this is scotch arc mechanism. So if you look at this scotch arc mechanism, if you plot a, the displacement versus time graph for this link one, displacement versus time graph. So I can say this is displacement of link number one, this is time. So I'm pulling this paper and this is running okay. So the plot is is a sine curve, okay. The displacement was a time graph is a sine curve. So this is also called as a sine function generator, okay? Just write down like this. The displacement was a time plot. The displacement was a time plot of link one. The displacement was a time plot for link one. The displacement was a time plot for link one is a sine curve. Is a sine curve. Is a sine curve. The displacement versus time plot for link one is a sine curve. Therefore, therefore, this mechanism is also called as this mechanism is also called as a sine function generator. Is a sine function generator. This mechanism is also called as a sine function generator. Scotchard mechanism is also called as a sine function generator. Okay. Sine function generator. So this is link number one, this is link number two, this is link number three, and this is link number four. Just listen here. So when I fix the link number two, when I fix this link number two, so we can rotate this link number three and this was reciprocating, right? We call that a scotch up mechanism. The same way, when I fix link number four, when I fix link number four, I can rotate link number three and the guide will be reciprocating like this. So I can say second inversion and fourth inversion are exactly the same, okay? Second inversion will coincide with fourth inversion. This side one like this. Second inversion and fourth inversion are identical. Second inversion and fourth inversion are identical. They are not different, okay? They are identical. Second inversion and fourth inversion are identical. So there is no separate fourth inversion, okay? It's same as second inversion. Next item, third inversion. Third inversion. Third inversion. Third inversion. 
थर्ड इन्वर्शन सो तुके थर्ड इन्वर्शन में गई तो फिक्स लिंक नंबर थ्री थर्ड इन्वर्शन ऑप्टेन बाय फिक्सिंग लिंक थ्री ऑप्टेन बाय फिक्सिंग लिंक थ्री ऑप्टेन बाय फिक्सिंग लिंक थ्री जस्ट लिसन हियर सो दिस इज लिंक नंबर थ्री दिस इज लिंक नंबर थ्री यू कैन सी एट द एंड ऑफ लिंक नंबर थ्री आई हैव टू स्लाइडर्स ओके सो दिस इज लिंक थ्री लिंक थ्री इज समथिंग लाइक दिस सो हियर आई हैव वन स्लाइडर सो दिस लिंक थ्री इज फिक्स्ड एंड दिस इज लिंक नंबर टू and this is link number 4 this is the shape if you look at that mechanism so you can see this is link 3 3 and 2 are connected by turning bar over here so we can rotate link number 2 about this point so similarly i can rotate link number 4 about this hinge 3 and 4 are connected by turning bar so i can rotate 4 about this hinge i can rotate 2 about this hinge so but if you look at this one these are in a guide okay these are in link 1 frame these are inside the frame now see here so i try to rotate link number 2 When I rotate link number two, I can say the frame also rotates. So when the frame rotates, I can say link number four also rotates. Are you getting my point? So I'm rotating this in clockwise by 90 degrees. So, so I can say the frame also rotates. The frame rotates, I can say this, the slider also rotates. Are you getting my point? So basically, what I'm doing is I'm rotating link number two. But when I rotate link number two, link number four is also getting rotated, and the motion is transmitted from link number two to link number four with the help of this guide or this frame, I can say. this frame so the frame can rotate the frame can rotate the frame is free to rotate right so what's what's the restriction on for the frame the frame is not fixed why the frame will not rotate so when i try to rotate this one the frame rotates because this is also hinged there is no restriction so when i try to rotate the frame that also rotates so if this is not a hinge joint here then the frame will not rotate because this orientation will not change If I rotate this one, this origin, this is free to rotate, right? Can be rotated. Link three is not a restriction. These are in different parallel planes, okay? They are not in same plane. They are in different parallel planes. Are you getting my point? So we can transfer motion from here to here, so by using this frame, okay? So. Basically, if I have two shafts and the two shafts are having some linear misalignment like this, the two shafts there is some offset between the two shafts. If the two shafts are perfectly aligned like this, so I go for a flange coupling. I go for a flange coupling. When I know the two shafts are having offset like this, so I have one shaft over here, I have one shaft over here, so I can transfer motion between two shafts having an offset, some offset by using this kind of mechanism again. Okay. So when our two shafts Are perfectly aligned like this, so we go for a coupling something like this. Okay, this coupling is called as flange coupling. Flange coupling. So when our two shafts are having this one, this kind of misalignment is called as angular misalignment. Angular misalignment. Angular misalignment. For angular misalignment, we go for universal coupling. Universal coupling, or this is also called as hooker's joint. Okay. Hooker's joint. Hooker's joint or universal coupling. For angular misalignments, we go for hooker's joint, or uh, and this is called as linear misalignment. Okay. This is called as linear misalignments. So whenever you have two shafts with linear misalignment like this, so we can use Oldham's coupling. Linear misalignment. We go for Oldham's coupling. So this device is called as Oldham's coupling. All arms coupling. The frame is a coupling. Okay, we can connect the two shafts, so having linear misalignment, and we can transfer motion between two shafts. So link one is not in pure rotation. Okay, this link one will be. It's in. It will be. It will be. It will be sliding as well as rotating. Okay. Right, and this is called as all arms coupling. All arms coupling. Oldham's coupling is used for connecting 
Old arms coupling is used for connecting two shafts, two shafts having linear misalignment. Old arms coupling is used for connecting two shafts having linear misalignment. Linear misalignment. So this kind of misalignment is called as linear misalignment. And for linear misalignments, we go for old arms coupling. For angular misalignments, we go for universal coupling. If they are perfectly aligned, we go for flange coupling. Okay. So this is the mechanism, okay? This is the mechanism. Your actual coupling is not like this. Slightly different, okay? So I'm drawing it. So link number three is fixed. This is link number three. This is link number three. This is link number three, and this is one shaft. This is one shaft. This is the other shaft. This is the other shaft. The two shafts are having linear misalignment, okay? This is the axis of the shaft. There is some linear misalignment. So motion is transmitted between these two shafts with the help of a couple or something like this. So the coupling is this one. This is link number three, okay? This is link number three. Three is connected to two and four, okay? Three is connected to two with the help of turning pair. This is link number three. This shaft is link number two. And this is link number four. 3 is connected to with the help of turning pair. 3 and 2 are connected by turning pair. 3 and 4 are connected by turning pair. Okay? 3 and 4 are connected by turning pair. And uh, this 2 and 4 are connected with the help of the frame. 2 and 4 are connected with the help of frame. This is the frame. And motion is transmitted from link 2 to link 4. So through the frame, through link 1. Okay? So this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. The coupling looks something like this. So kinematically everything is same, okay? How link 1 and link 2 are connected? So they are connected by a sliding pair. So 1 and 2 are connected by a sliding pair. So 1 and 2 are connected by a sliding pair. So 1 and 4 are connected by a sliding pair. 1 and 4 are connected by a sliding pair. 2 and 3 are connected by turning pair. 2 and 3 are connected. 3 and 4 are connected by turning pair. Okay? So this is scotch arc mechanism, okay? This is scotch arc mechanism. Old arm coupling is this one, okay? It works like this. This is old arms coupling, you can see. So the sleeve, you can see. It's just like the guide, okay? It will be sliding and partially moving, uh, rotating, okay? It is sliding. The relative motion between the two shafts is sliding, okay? It is sliding in between the two shafts, okay? Okay, this is third inversion. Now these are the different inversions. There is no fourth inversion here. Fourth inversion is exactly the same as your second inversion. And if you look at this one, you know what is quick return ratio, right? So and there are three quick return mechanisms, okay? There are three quick return mechanisms. Whitworth mechanism, slotted lever mechanism and uh, offset slider tank mechanism. It's a very important point, okay? Many times there were questions in many exams. What's the answer for this? The coupling used to connect two shafts with large angular misalignment is. So what's the coupling that is used for connecting two shafts with large angular misalignment? Well, you people are dangerous. So for large angular misalignments, we go for universal coupling or hooker's joint, okay? We go for universal coupling or hooker's joint. For uh, uh, what do you say? Linear misalignments. We go for old arm coupling, okay? This is linear misalignment. For linear misalignments, we go for universal uh, old arms coupling. For angular misalignments, we go for universal coupling or hooker's joint. Scotch arc mechanism is used for generating. 
scorchock mechanism is used to generate the sine function in it, okay? It is used for generating sine functions. So universal coupling or hooker's joint is used for shafts with angular misalignments and Ohlam coupling is used for shafts with linear misalignment, okay? It's very important point. We'll discuss this mechanical advantage later, okay? Once we are done with velocity analysis, I will discuss this. Just look at these questions. So what does degrees of freedom indicate for a mechanism? So flange coupling is used for uh, connecting two shafts with oh, which are perfectly aligned like this, okay? So this is a flange, okay? This one. Go for flange coupling. So degrees of freedom indicates uh, number of independent relative motions or I can say minimum number of parameters required to describe position and motion. If it is a mechanism, so degrees of freedom indicates number of inputs required to make the mechanism constrained. So degrees of freedom for a structure is zero and for a superstructure it will be negative. Kutzbeck's criterion, you know that the formula for degrees of freedom is called as Kutzbeck's criterion. Number of inversions, so R n, okay. If there are n links in a mechanism, number of inversions possible are n. So, inversions of four bar mechanism, so double crank mechanism, crank rocker, rocker, rocker. So, to get double crank mechanism, you need to fix the shortest link. To get crank rocker mechanism, you need to fix the link adjacent to shortest. For double rocker mechanism, you can fix link opposite to the shortest. So, you have seen the applications of a slider crank. So, for first inversion, if you see the applications, IC engine and reciprocating compressor. IC engine and reciprocating compressor are the applications of first inversion. And for second inversion, if you see the applications, applications of second inversion, Whitworth mechanism and uh, rotary engine. For third inversion, it, we have seen it is oscillating cylinder engine and slotted bar mechanism. Fourth inversion applications, it's a hand pump, okay? So, for Whitworth mechanism, stroke length is independent of alpha, okay? So, quick return ratio and stroke length are independent in Whitworth mechanism. Whereas in slotted lever mechanism, both are dependent. For smaller stroke lengths, for smaller stroke lengths, uh, quick return ratio is small and for larger stroke lengths, quick return ratio is large. Okay. So, what are the inversions of double slider crank mechanism? So, we are seeing the first inversion application is elliptical terminal. Second inversion application is Old arms, uh, sorry, Scotchock mechanism. Application of third inversion is old arms coupling. These are the applications.